friends and welcome to another episode of Cyril's Brettspiel. Today is a special episode, a preview, a Kickstarter preview for the upcoming Kickstarter Heroes vs. Warlords. Heroes vs. Warlords is designed by Dirk Blech and will be published by UGG. UGG stands for Udo Grebe Game Design and this Kickstarter is a big, big thing in my opinion. At least if you are a PC gamer. Why? As you might imagine from the graphics of the artwork already here, Heroes vs. Warlords is based on a very, very famous PC game, which is Heroes of Might and Magic. And there are only two, three, maybe four PC titles on this planet who always kept me playing over and over again at each single title, and one of them is Heroes of Might and Magic. I really like strategy games on the PC and I really like it. not not so much real time. Sometimes real time Command and Conquer was good as well, but round based strategy was always my favorite and this one at least the PC game was the best one. Therefore, I couldn't wait to get my hands on Heroes vs Warlords because when you see what's inside the box and this is just a prototype, as I should mention every time when I'm making a preview. This is just a prototype. But when you see what's all on the table and when you see the components for this upcoming game, you see exactly why I said oh, this is definitely Heroes of Might and Magic, the board game, even if they don't have the rights to say so. So, of course, in each single Heroes of Might and Magic games, we have heroes here and we have hero tableaus where you show your heroes. We will have in this game three different fractions. We will have the Amazonas, we will also have the Barbarians and we have the Knights here. So blue, red and yellow. These are the three different fractions and each fraction will have a maximum of two heroes. Here you can see their attack value, their defense value, their maximum here is their movement and here are the upgrades. So this maximum is something that is really interesting because it's different on these characters here. So this max is their initiative, the yellow ones. So in this case, this one would be starting with an eight, but has a max of 16. And this one is a little bit slower. He has a seven here. Yeah, it's a he. So here you will have some achievements later on and here you will have your armies. Um, uh, what you can see here and that is really interesting is you have always six spots of armies to a max. Now let's take a closer look to the army and these will be tokens or chits later on. These are all the chits for the good guys, for the heroes and these are all the neutral ones aka guards. I have a couple of them lined up here already, one of each. So here for the red ones for the barbarians you have the yellow one is um, indicated as the level and the cost. Red one again here attack, defense and then movement. The movement is not really important in the base game. They have advanced rules in it and then movement comes into play for each single unit. Anyway I come to that in later on. So level one, level two, level three, level four, level five is cavalry and level six. That's the max you can have and each single one costs a little bit more. As you can see you also have ranged attack guys here like um, here is a crossbow guy or a spearman or just a bowman. So from the neutrals you have also level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, level 5 and level 6. And as you can see you have an 18 attack value here on level 6 or here 16 and defense 18. And when you go back to level 1, wow, you have 4, 0 or 3, 1. So that's a huge swing between the low level and the high level uh, armies.
So, but this would be just one army and we all know in Heroes of Might and Magic just one army is lame. So there is never just one in it. Therefore you have the stacking tokens. Here for an example is 16. And if you put a 16 under this one token, like this one here, yeah, not a neutral one, let's take for an example this red one here. So now you have 16 level 1 fighter in your army. From now on, whenever you are attacking with this army, you have this army in here. And you can also have cavalry in here. Let's say you have this 18 cavalry in here. And now prepare them, put the 18 in here. And now your hero, uh, in addition to the hero itself, has this and that army in. Everybody can see he has two armies, but not the strength of the army. And that is exactly what Heroes of Might and Magic is also doing. Of course, it's a one to three player game, as you can see, but wait, there's more. All of these are chits for each single number. Here you have a 10, here you have a 2, they are double sided, so on the other side you have a 1, so and on the other side from the 10 is a 9, so therefore you can guaranteed put all the armies in there that you need. For moving around on the board or for other reasons you have these hero tokens here, you have also your own clan tokens to claim that but you have also and that is also part of the PC, PC game your own city and as in the city you have to improve your city so you can build towers to defend yourself here left and right tower you could also build hamlets barracks uh, shooting ranges academies therefore you can build higher level um, characters up to level 5, up to level 6. Here you need the resources for to build up and here you have other ones they are giving you income and down on the bottom you simply mark your um, resources like wood and iron or stone and crystals and money. So this is in front of each single player, his personal player area and you simply mark down with all your tokens here what you have already achieved. Like this one here means for an example you achieved already the city hall. However these arrows mean you have to improve this one before you can do that and then that. So in this case it should be like this. But all of that whoever have played Heroes of Might and Magic knows exactly what I'm talking about. In Heroes of Might and Magic, one of the essentials is the combat and they are covering that here. There's a very easy mode where you have only lined up your armies. Here you have ranged attacker and here you have closed combatter. So ranged attack shoots first and so on. And then you can shoot to anybody, but when a close combat, a melee combat attacks, you can only attack the melee or the cavalry and so on. However, you have also towers in here, that's level 2, and you have more attacks if you wanted to play with movement and all of that. Like in the original game, this looks more like in the PC game, but if you wanted to play it easy, I highly recommend start with this one here, and that would be a city. If you have towers, your arrow guys, your um, ranged guys starting on here. There's a little bit more in it, there's a cheat sheet, when you're moving around you might find some runes, you might find some new resources like um, gold uh, mines or things like that. You might also find some towers and all of them can be guarded by creatures or neutral armies. For that you roll a die and whatever the die out roll is you will see what's going on. Here is another table and another tableau to see what happens on outpost tables, on conquest tables, on movements and so on. But also movement, honor and level of hero, all of these are basic and advanced rules. Um, that is something I really appreciate and I will show you that in the rulebook in a second. But before I do so, let's just finish our tour about the components. We will have this seven uh, hex pieces of um, 
board tiles here on the back when, uh, for when there's still fog of war and you haven't discovered your territory. This is the backside, but once you flipped it over, you might have some resources. Here is wood on it. You might have some other things on it and that will help you. Sometimes you have river on it and so on but while you are traveling around the world. All of this is interesting to see what's going on here for an example as you can see here you have the starting player of the red one of the barbarians and you use that to again to travel around the world last but not least like in the original game you have equipment here so whenever you are searching a, a tomb or whatever in on one of these tiles here whenever you are going on an adventure you might find some of this equipment here and that will help the uh, hero for an example with movement with attack and so on with defense initiative so you will have some of these equipments later on and like in the original PC game it's very helpful to have that and you now really probably saw that I or heard that I mentioned a lot of times the original uh, PC game. Why? That is simple. Late, lately I got again Heroes of uh, Might and Magic and put it on my PC again. I had some spare time and I wanted to play a little bit so I started to play Heroes of Might and Magic this time part 7 again and I was immediately kept up. And when I got this prototype here I was so pumped up to see how this one is going and honestly it delivers. It delivers because it is exactly what you expect from a board game that is Heroes of Might and Magic and however it's called Heroes vs Warlords because of rare rights anyway so it is exactly what you expect you are moving around and you are traveling around the world discover and explore new tiles i will put it up in a second here on the table and then you face neutral armies to get some of these uh, resources here to increase your income to build up more buildings then uh, get more armies into your heroes and then at some point fa face the other heroes and have a gigantic cool battle. See here's how the board could look like. Each single player has a player area. If you're not sure this one here is obviously the red one so it's very easy but again this is just a prototype so artwork and material will definitely change especially the quality component this will be cardboard at the end of the day and not just prototype print out however this is how it works and now each single movement is worth one victory uh, one movement point however there are um, yellow circled or golden surrounded tiles areas these are resource tiles let's say you already claimed them then you mark them um, and then you can move around and start exploring your new world it's always like it's oriented north so in this case you will flip it over and now go from here when you come up here later on you flip that over and you see you might find some other perks in here ruins cities other resource tokens and so on so that is really helpful and handy and feels exactly like the pc game another thing that i really like on this game and this prototype is and i think that is super smart I already mentioned when I showed you the component that we have different battlefields so later on in the game when you face your enemies like here and you show up in a battle then you bring your armies from here onto your battle uh, area let's assume you bring it that to the side like this one here you reveal your troops you put your troops here and here and now the attacker brings in his troops as well so he has probably an army from here but he has also 
a ranged striker and a level 6 already. He's very confident to win, so he has already four of his armies here. Nice, so ranged attack goes there. So very nice, so he's the attacker and he's attacking a stronghold. So that is a possible option. Then you can start. And I already mentioned that if you want that with a little bit more depth to the game, then you simply go over to that and you have movement. The same one is here on the board. In the base game, you have simply rules one spot is worth one movement point each. Later on in the game, if you have really experienced, you can go over to the advanced rules and take a look at the movement table and then you see different terrains have d needed different movement points. Of course, mountains needs more movement points than plains or just grassland, which makes absolutely sense and which represents the depths of the deepness of this real PC game and not like just a generic game. But to modify that and bring you an easy setup, an easy start for a deep, rich game like this, you will see you have an overview here, an index, and then you have a couple of pages, but from here, from in the middle of the book, you start with the advanced rule book. So you don't have to read that from here. You only go up to level, uh, to page 15. So in 15 pages, including this index, including the components and the map description, you have roughly 14 pages of rules to start the game, which is for a game like this, not too heavy. Definitely not. Um, you, so you can start with a really interesting experience and add more rules to the game. If you decide, okay, I played that a couple of times and now I wanted to play it with more realistic movement rules, okay, why not from now on hills and mountains have different movement points. Why not from now on we also include the movement points of the armies here for an example four, five, four, cavalry has seven, sometimes only three and so on. And from now on you move your armies on the battle and you can only fight adjacent armies. So then cavalry is very fast and it can attack your ranged striker, so they can uh, they can uh, are able to come out of the gate here and go there, while your ranged strikers from here are only uh, able to attack the walls or the towers here, and the armies are protected inside at least from your melee attacks. So you have to li li line up before and attacking um, stronghold or the city. It's really, really dangerous. Sum up all of these. So you will get a really thematically deep and correct game of the PC game. If you are a huge fan of the PC game, like I am of Heroes of Might and Magic, then this is the game you were always waiting for, always, your whole life, because this board, games is, this board game is exactly, exactly, what you are playing on your PC, except for now you're playing it with your friends. You can have gigantic epic battles. Uh, can you imagine if you have up to six different armies in each single army stack, up to 20 units, so you have 120 units clashing against each other, 120 against 120. And when you attack, the attack system is very easy, at least the base attack system here. So you have an attacker of five here, the defender has for an example here a one, now roll a d20, you always add a d20. So attacker, oh darn, has just a nine, defender has, oh, has a three plus one is four. So you kill five armies. That's it, it's so easy. You simply roll a d20. You might think, wow, that's a lot of luck. It's true, d20 is by far a lot of luck. 
no question about it. But keep in mind, you have stacks of armies. You have 120 units, up to 120 units. And when you take a look at the number six here, you have 17 and 14. And if you are attacking with your champion here, with 17, an army of this one here, level three, which has only a defense of two, it's almost a guaranteed win. The question is only, do I kill 10, 15, 20 or 30 people? The same with the um, defending. When you are defending your city, for an example, you will get some walls. And you see, you have a city wall, 10, 20 and 40 points. Health points, life points, security points. It doesn't matter how you call them, but you can only race down a wall when you get the chance of at least getting a 40 to kill that uh, wall. That is a lot of, I mean, obviously you're getting some modifiers here by your hero, for an example, a three. So each single attack will has an additional three and so on. You could also add your equipment here. This one here gives you another two. And of course you can level up. I mean, let's say you already level up your hero, then you might have a plus eight or plus nine or whatever. So there is a good chance, but there's no chance in hell with a level one to race down a wall, which is semantically so, so correct. I cannot believe how great they implemented all of the PC game um, parts into a single board game. Speaking of a single board game, yeah, it's true. You can see it's a big box and that is only the uh, prototype box. The artwork might not be final as well. Um, and it's obviously not a light family game, but this is not how it is how it should be, how it is designed to, and how it is marketed. This is a real heavier game. So uh, Udo Grebe is the, uh, known for war games. This is the PC game built into a board game, which means you have a really interesting combat system, easy enough in the base system, but heavy enough in the advanced system that all of your desires, of your dreams, as a more realistic fight is built inside this game box. And I have to say, I was mostly impressed, I guess, by first of all, how to use your money and improve your city, which is a very Euro style mechanic. So you are trying to get more gold. Each single city has only up to five gold spots. So each single can only produce five gold. However, you have three rounds each round. So you can have, can produce a maximum of 15 gold per round. And when you see that uh, level five guy, cost you five gold so you can only build out of one city up to three of these um, horsemen uh, per round so you can imagine this is an epic game an epic game of battles of clashes of combat and that is what is heroes of might and magic all about you play the game usually two, three, four, five hours in a row for just one map to finish one map and you always face this gigantic armies. I'm usually having uh, whatever, 300, 400 uh, bowmen in my armies and 40, 50 griffins or whatever. It depends on the um, level or not level of the um, number in the series, there are different series and they have different creatures and different races and so on. But anyway, um, let's go back here. And this is all of that is built in one of the game boxes. And that is what Heroes vs. Warlords is all about. This is what this Kickstarter is all about. Create your personal Heroes of Might and Magic board game board game, smith your own board game and bring all of that what you already played on your PC to the table. If you like Heroes of Might and Magic, this game is what you want. 
please hit me with a lot of questions if you have questions to the rules if you want to see to see more please uh, send me some messages uh, go into the comment section and uh, send some comments I'm more than happy to talk more but I, I will try to keep that video here as short as possible and as you can hear I'm so excited that I got this one to the table that yeah I want you definitely to share my passion for this one with you simply because the original PC game is one of my passion, uh, passionate games ever, one of my dream games ever and finally, finally I will get it through the table with Heroes vs Warlords from Dirk Blech und and Udo Grebe Game Design. Whew. This was Niels from Sylvils Brettspiele with another preview uh, edition here. This time I showed you something that I'm super excited about. See you next time. Until then, bye bye. Join me for another ride next time. My name is Niels and have a lot of fun while you are playing games, cool games made for